This has been extremely moving, and it's my great privilege to present to you Amina Wang, who's going to talk about Olga Johansson, Jonathan, and uh, about why she is a surgical hero. Amina. So about six to eight months ago, I was contacted by my graduating chair from The Ohio State University. I was there so long that I actually had multiple chairs uh, through my training. Um, through this presentation, I want you to listen because the other challenge I had was Dr. Jonasson had passed away a number of years ago, and so finding material was somewhat challenging. I want you to listen very carefully for the household terms that we talk about every day um, in our work lives, graduate medical education, surgical research, quality through NSQIP, mentoring, sponsorship. Listen carefully for our legacy through her words. I'm Amina Huang. As a staff member of the Colorectal Surgery Department and the Vice Chair of Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine Department here at the Cleveland Clinic, I am honored to have been invited to coordinate this presentation on the career of Dr. Olga Jonasson. As one of her trainees in general surgery at The Ohio State University, I received outstanding clinical training, superlative research and academic experiences, and still had a productive personal life outside the hospital. Dr. Jonasson was instrumental in helping me have it all. My personal story with her was getting pregnant as a surgical intern and needing to let her know. I made the appointment with trepidation, fearing that this might be a career-ending event. Instead, she was delighted and so supportive that we used this experience academically via an invited editorial published in JAMA. She was a surgical hero in so many ways, and her legacy will live on through generations of her trainees, colleagues, and friends. Today, I will share a small fraction of her story of firsts with you. I became interested in medicine as a child uh, in my home with my mother who'd been a nurse and my father who was a clergyman made many hospital visits and I was fascinated by the hospital and often accompanied him on his visits and uh, I don't remember ever really wanting to be anything else. I chose to go to the University of Illinois uh, rather than to Northwestern or any of the other medical schools to which I'd applied, largely because of the uh, opportunity to work at Cook County Hospital, which I thought was a thrilling experience. I found medicine to be extremely exciting in almost all aspects, and when I was a student, I liked everything that I encountered. The thing that really drew me into surgery were the people with whom I associated. So I applied uh, for a surgical residency with my professor, Dr. Warren Cole, at the University of Illinois, a very famous man at the time. He was one of the people who really influenced the direction of modern surgery. I don't know how many women had actually approached him in the past, one or two. It was uh, not done in those days, and uh, I uh, felt no qualms whatsoever in approaching him. He sponsored me, uh, sponsored my memberships in various organizations. So I was actually the first woman surgeon to be admitted to most of the surgical organizations in this country. It's very important to have a mentor, especially in an academic career, but I suppose in a practice career as well, to have a role model, a mentor, someone that can help you uh, go through the early phases and advance your career. The person who's a mentor, uh, uh, for a woman surgeon is particularly important because networking is, is everything in an academic career. You can do very little, unfortunately, all alone. You need to do the work and then have someone uh, uh, invite you to make a presentation and to uh, collaborate in research and to uh, write articles and speak. When I finished my residency, I had hoped to go directly into an academic position uh, as a, uh, an assistant professor of surgery. And Dr. Cole advised me, in fact, he told me that he wouldn't take me at that point, that I really needed to go into the laboratory and do some basic research. I had 
done some research in cancer while a medical student and a resident, but uh, following my residency, I began doing research in transplantation, but with always the aim of doing clinical work in transplantation. It was new, exciting, uh, so much to learn, and very challenging at the time. Still, I guess. I was recruited to uh, be the uh, uh, chief of surgery at a very large uh, municipal institution, Cook County Hospital, uh, which, of course, I uh, really wanted to do. It was a wonderful position, a uh, very thrilling, exciting place to be. There were 4,000 beds at Cook County, and it was uh, uh, filled uh, all the time. Cook County had a famous trauma unit, a wonderful general surgical unit, many other fine surgical specialties, and it was very interesting to work there. I've always felt very, very privileged to work with the indigent and uh, felt that my years at Cook County, in those years, I probably made more contributions than I've ever made since. I learned a lot about interpersonal relationships and how to negotiate and how to deal with people. Dr. Jonasson was the first woman on the American Board of Surgery and the first woman elected to the American Surgical Association. She and the late Dr. George Sheldon spearheaded rescuing funding for five years of general surgery residency training as we know it. In 1985, she was elected to chair Reagan's task force on organ transplantation. Here to tell us more about today's report is the chairman of the task force, Dr. Olga Jonasson. She is a kidney transplant specialist and chief of surgery at Cook County Hospital in Chicago. Dr. Jonasson, we've just seen that report from Minnesota. You see it. What is wrong with the current organ transplant system? Why do we need to change it? Oh, there are a number of things that are wrong. Uh, among them, of course, and leading the way is the shortage of organ donors. But following closely upon that, of course, is the inability of many patients to pay the high cost for heart and liver transplantation. Uh, we were very gratified, the members of the task force, were to hear uh, Secretary Bowen's recent announcement that Medicare would finally agree to pay for uh, heart transplantation, but only for Medicare beneficiaries. And of course, that's a very limited group of people. Now, specifically, why are you recommending <clears throat> that, uh, that Medicare and private insurance companies should start to pay for heart and liver transplants? Because these are proven to be effective and uh, life-saving methods of treatment. Uh, as uh, long as three years ago, there was a recommendation from a National Institutes of Health consensus panel to the federal government that liver transplantation was no longer experimental but was therapeutic. And we recommended at that time that the government pay for liver transplantation for identified conditions that, would, uh, that we knew would benefit from the treatment. I'm Jean Aymon. I'm the chief of transplantation at Columbia and a professor of surgery. I met Dr. Olga Jonasson in 1979 when I matched to the combined surgical training program at the University of Illinois and Cook County Hospital. At that point, Dr. Jonasson was the chair of surgery at Cook County. She had been forged in the academic rigors of the University of Illinois under Warren Cole. She was by then a transplant pioneer establishing kidney transplantation. She also had established and was managing a primate colony of diabetic monkeys that was a national treasure in the early research on the use of transplantation for pancreas and diabetes. She taught me how to be a doctor first, a doctor that put patients first, not like today's slogans of academic healthcare, but real doctoring. She taught us to be uncompromising surgeons and to never forget the young people. In 1987, Dr. Olga Jonasson, after nine years as chief of surgery at Cook County Hospital in Chicago, was appointed chair of the Department of Surgery at the Ohio State University, the first and only woman to hold such an academic appointment in the U.S. And then I had the opportunity to look at the position of the chairman of the Department of Surgery at Ohio State. Ohio State has a famous Department of Surgery, largely because of its longtime chairman, Dr. Robert Zollinger, a real leading figure in the field. 
and uh, the thought to come to his department as chairman was uh, almost irresistible. I think the student uh, who is destined to be a good surgeon uh, is one who uh, uh, enjoys the atmosphere and the frontline work and loves it. Uh, uh, most surgeons, uh, especially the younger ones, are happiest when they're busiest and when the patients are the sickest and the challenges are at their height. Her international reputation earned her an honorary fellowship at the Royal College of Surgeons. As a chair, her trainees continue to prosper from her teaching. I learned a tremendous amount from Dr. Jonason, um, not only clinically, but probably more important in terms of leadership. Um, I think that uh, I took a tremendous amount away from her uh, in watching how she uh, managed our service. As a Saudi foreign medical graduate, I owe Dr. Olga Jonason a great debt of gratitude for accepting me in the general surgery program at the Ohio State University. To this day, I still remember vividly her telephone call to me after match results came out. Since I didn't match anywhere, she asked me if I would accept a one-year prelim spot at OSU. Without hesitation, I said, of course. Dr. Jonathan was an amazing mentor and incredible supporter of my surgical education and training. She even arranged for my research in the physiology labs of Dr. Jackie Wood. I thank God for having had the privilege and honor of being her resident. In 1993, Dr. Jonason returned to Chicago as the first Director of Education and Surgical Services at the American College of Surgeons. She was influential in securing funding for the rollout of the National Surgical Quality Improvement Program. Hello, I'm Brian Berkey, a head neck surgeon at the Cleveland Clinic. I first met Dr. Jonason during my work with the American College of Surgeons. I'm an otolaryngologist and did not know of her extensive work in the field of transplant surgery, but I came to quickly admire her organizational ability. I was newly appointed to what was then the Committee for Young Surgeons in 2000 and was placed on a committee to develop what would be the Resident and Associate Society of the ACS. Dr. Jonathan formed a working team out of a bunch of us young, inexperienced, but enthusiastic surgeons. She was a taskmaster and knew her final objective but helped us develop our own ideas in an organized and logical fashion. We developed the bylaws and procedures for the society, as well as great friendships. And I remember thinking how Dr. Jonathan considered our successes to be hers as well. She inspired teamwork and a sense of purpose, and I continue to carry her teaching and wisdom forward into my own career. Thank you. The second memory I'd like to share is occurred about four months after the birth of my second child. Olga asked me if I was ready to travel because she knew that I had just delivered my second child. At that point I said yes and this was travel to a planning meeting held in Chicago for what eventually became the VA hernia trial as well as the NIH funded watchful waiting versus open hernia trial. Through her support in, this, in attending this meeting and beyond, I became the study chair for the VA portion of the trial. This was a very successful trial and had launched my academic career. She actually started meeting with Katherine Anderson and myself at the American Surgical Association meetings to, um, to look at what she called worthy women, to see if these women should be nominated for the American Surgical Association and be members. I pointed out to her that I wasn't a member either. She said, well, that was unacceptable. And uh, she got uh, support for me to become a member of the organization. At the college, um, she always was considerate of appointing women to positions of speaking on women's issues and involving herself in the activities. But she was great to really all young people. Olga invited uh, young people from the community to come to the clinical congress meetings so that they could see what surgery and medicine was all about and it inspired these bright young people who may have very few role models uh, to, to really look to achieve something a little bit more than they may know. Olga Jonasson was a role model for women in surgery of my generation. There were very few women faculty members at all, no less women professors or leaders in surgery, and Olga was living proof that you actually could succeed and succeed on your own terms through hard work. I never trained with her, I never worked for her, but I met her at surgical societies and she was always a friend to me. 
She came to me and said, Monica, it's time for you to join the American Surgical Association. And she wrote me a letter so complimentary, I thought perhaps my own mother had written it. So Olga was there to open the door for women. She never forgot the importance of mentorship. And not only did she open the door, she held out her hand and helped you walk through. She really was a giant among surgeons. It feels very hard looking back on it. I think I would have enjoyed perhaps smelling roses a little bit more along the way. I work and have worked real hard all my life and many, many hours in the week. Some years ago, I often wondered if I knew what I knew today, if I would have gone through a surgical residency. Uh, obviously, the answer is yes. Being a surgeon is a wonderful profession, and I love it, and it's really challenging, and it's fun to be successful and to have accomplished a great deal. So I, I hope you enjoyed was, that. Yeah. That was a truly inspiring video that I think brought out so many of the things that we look at uh, as being a true surgical hero. Um, as you look back at her life and her legacy, what do you think is her biggest legacy, Amina? I actually think it, for all of the surgical heroes, it's all of us. It's all of their trainees, the principals, the soul of who we are as an organization, how we work as a team, how we want to develop young people, um, innovation. Um, it's, that is what we are as an organization, and that's what we should be sharing and showing the public and young people that we want to uh, join us. So I had the privilege of knowing Olga when she was at Ohio State, and I was at a little institution called Mount Sinai in Cleveland. I found Olga intimidating. Uh, she was tall, and she was strong, and uh, you know the fact that she was a woman didn't even occur to me because she was such a powerful force in surgery that when she would call, I would be a little nervous about what she wanted. Truthfully, she was kind and giving, as you suggested in the uh, video, and when she was at the college and often called me for a discussion of an issue, I was so honored that Olga would ask my opinion, because if you knew her, you knew that she was entirely honest, was always trying to do the right thing, and wouldn't worry about the resistance that she would get. And she, the fact that she would ask your advice was a great compliment. Uh, I think that uh, you pointed out that she was a leader for many other women in surgery. Uh, she was also a great role model for those of us that aren't women because of her strength and honesty as well. Hi, my name is Ray Sinha. I'm from Spokane, Washington. I had the privilege to work with Dr. Jonason as a student and as a resident. And like Dr. Ponsky mentioned, she pointed out to me lots of times, stand up straight when we're taking these department um, photos. And I said, I am standing up straight. <laughs> oh my, you are short. You know, funny things like that. She was a strong advocate for graduate medical education, patient care, especially for the poor and vulnerable. And she taught so much compassion um, that, to us that we carry on today. Um, I just wanted to share a couple of stories with you because she has contributed so much to the understanding of surgery. But on a personal note, she was very balanced. She knew everything about music, art, travel, the world, and I thought it was fascinating that most of us could not do what she has, had done in her lifetime. She impacted a lot of us in different ways. She had uh, 
ideas for what we could achieve when we didn't know. We were just struggling to stay alive, get through those five, six, seven years of surgical training. And when I was, uh, I remember when I was filling out my um, residency applications, I was a fourth year medical student, and I said, oh, this program is great in trauma. You know, you, for some reason you like trauma, then y you look at these programs. She goes, uh, no, you can't go there. And I said, well, why? I can't get in, or what do you think? And she goes, you grew up in upscale Columbus, Ohio neighborhood. You wouldn't be able to survive. You'd get shot in like one week at that training program. I'd say, okay, all right. So you took her advice. She helped even when I didn't know why people were asking me for interviews. It was Dr. Jonason working on the sidelines. She was our biggest fan. One of the funny things uh, about her is, is her center. We were so afraid, like Dr. Ponsky said, if you got called to, what was the, 801, 8, 8101 or something, that extension on our, our beepers, we knew something bad was going to happen. So one of our uh, crazy chief residents, uh, he, I, I don't even know how we graduated that year. One of my mentors, he let us graduate despite all this, but um, he was making fun. We were make, we had little nicknames for all the attendings, and I'm sure for all the residents and everything. He was just trying to get the time going, and um, I think he was going a little bit overboard, and I thought we were going to get in trouble because it was OJ, the juice. Then it would be something else, and and uh, her. Uh, mannerisms. So I said, you know what, I'm going to go to Geneva, who was in your video, her longtime secretary, and said, can you write on official letterhead to my buddy who keeps making fun of everybody? Because I know we're going to get caught, we're going to get fired, or worse, we'll have to do this residency all over again when she finds out. So she goes, oh, sure. What do you want me to say? And I said, well, you know, it has come to my attention that the chief resident class is setting a bad example, mocking the attendings, especially myself, and this will not be tolerated pursuant to Ohio State regents, rules, whatever uh, disciplinary action will be taken. So she said, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll have this done, and I'll put it on your desk so you guys can, you know, play this trick on one of the really bad chief residents in my class. And sure enough, later that day, there's a letter, and it's all typed up on official, you know, envelope. We open it up, and my heart sank because Geneva, I knew that signature, and it was real. <laughs> it wasn't a stamp that I was thinking she was going to stamp, and I go, God, I ran over to the department uh, chair's office, and I said, Geneva, please tell me that you did not do this and did not let Dr. Jonason read this. She goes, oh, of course she knows you guys are all making fun of her. You don't think she knows that? She signed it and told me what to write on this paper. <laughs> I said, oh, we're dead. We've got like three months to go and we're dead. And she goes, oh, she, she thought it was hilarious that you guys always make fun of her and things. So on that note, I just wanted to say that she was a great surgeon, great scientist, great person, advocated for both men and women, in particular um, young people, inspired them to go into surgery and stick with it when there were times when we all wanted to quit. Um, and I want to thank her for everything she's done, speaking for medical students, residents, and faculty members. She was our biggest fan to be the best that we can be. So, Amina, great job. Thank you. Dr. Ellison. Dr. Richards, thank you very much. I, I just wanted to say that um, I, I was a faculty member uh, under Olga Jonasson, and I observed uh, several facts. One, she was committed to student education above and beyond anything else. Secondly, she was committed to the 
training of outstanding surgical residents, two of whom are in the room today. And thirdly, she was committed to patients. Patients came first. And she would stand up um, to hospital administration, to anyone that was denying top quality care to our patients uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, and I, I, I think that's how I remember her. So Amina, you did a great job with this. Thank you so much. Well, this has been really an outstanding session. Um, I think these are truly four surgical heroes, and we have many, many more. I think uh, uh, it's important, uh, uh, as Steve said earlier, that the, this program go on and that we promulgate this out to not only our patients, but the general public and to our uh, young surgical uh, residents and students uh, so that they can understand uh, why these people are heroes and uh, uh, what the American College of Surgeons stands for and uh, how great our profession is. Uh, so I'd like you all to take a chance, uh, you know, take some time out, fill out the evaluations, uh, tell the uh, ACS program committee that this was uh, not only a worthwhile event, but please continue it uh, and publicize it a little bit more and to put it into a room in which we can get more uh, people uh, here in the future. I'd also like to really thank all of the presenters who took a lot of personal time, effort, money, sweat, blood, and tears uh, to put these together. They did a fantastic job. They really did. And they deserve another round of applause. <laughs> Steve, do you have anything else? I'd like to thank everybody uh, for coming. We're in discussions with the ACS Foundation about maybe establishing a fund so it's not so hard to, to, to make these. And because, you know, we would like to have captured Ogle's words six years ago, and there's a lot of great people who we really need to get on camera and get their stories be so that their stories will live on in the surgical lore. We're, we're already working on next year's. Uh, we'll give you a preview. We, we've, we're trying to work on a story of uh, Tom Starzl and a story of Claude Organ, and we have a few others in mind. If you have suggestions from any specialty, please feel for free to write. Uh, Bill and I, we're in the college directory, and we're not just general surgery-centric, we're looking for stories all across the continuum of surgery. So really, thank you for coming.